mother of the news. Read all about it. Track down all the clues. With interesting people, there's a mystery to be solved. An adventure is unfolding, so why not get involved? Everyone here is getting ready for Christmas, even though it's still quite warm. Apparently, Victoria doesn't get much snow in the winter, except for the mountains, which are snow-capped all year long. Temperature is low enough that snow is permanently covering the top of the mountains? Yes, Dada, we know that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine waking up each morning and seeing mountains from your window? Yes, yeah, Sam sure is lucky. Things at school are going quite well. I've made some friends now. You can tell Otto that he was correct about my ability to make friends on my own. <laughs> I thought the last edition of the Chronicle was the best ever. Alex seems to have a real knack for writing stories. Naturally. <laughs> but don't tell him, or he'll become as conceited as Otto. Well, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Only Samantha get Otto and Alex to share the same opinion. That's true. They've never agreed on anything before. <laughs> okay, Otto. We've been learning about parodies in school. Everyone in my class had to change a favorite poem so that it had a different meaning, but still kept the same rhythm and rhyme. I'm enclosing two of the best ones. Maybe you could print them in the next edition. Does she say if she's coming back to Herberville for Christmas? No, just the opposite. Listen, my father's business meeting with the university in Herbertville has been postponed until spring. So I won't see you until then. I still miss you all very much. I can't believe that it's been five months since I left. It seems like yesterday. Say hello to everyone for me. Love, Sam. Samantha appears to be adjusting well to her new situation. Yeah, it's too bad she can't come back for the holidays. I know, we could send her something really nice for Christmas. How about sending her auto? Then we'd get some peace around here. Don't jam your circuits, Otto. He's only joking. Maybe we could save enough money to phone her. Great idea. She'd really like that. Has anyone heard of the poem Fog by Carl Sandburg? I have. Here, Lynn, you read the original poem, and I'll read the parody. Okay. The fog comes on little cat's feet. It sits looking over the harbor and city on silent haunches, and then moves on. Hey, that's neat. I never thought about fog that way. Here's a parody. It's called Mosquito. Mosquito? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I know, but just listen. The bug comes on flimsy thin wings. It lands gently on your bare forearm and lunches with silent stinger and then flies off. Well, that's certainly good enough to print in the Chronicle. It cleverly approximates the style of the original poem. What's the second one, Alex? It's called The Song of Hiawatha. Is that the one about the Indian Hiawatha? Right. Yeah. Ye who love a nation's legends, love the ballads of a people that like voices from afar off, 
Call to us to pause and listen, speak in tones so plain and childlike, scarcely can the ear distinguish whether they are sung or spoken. Listen to this Indian legend, to the song of Hiawatha. It's got a sort of sing-song rhythm, hasn't it? So does this parody. It must be a power failure. Chris, Alex, are you all right? I think so. What happened? Otto! <laughs> Stop fooling around, Otto. Theta, what's wrong with Otto? His circuits have been damaged. Because of the power failure? I do not know. Otto is trying to switch to alternate circuits. Come on, Otto. You can do it. It's working. He's printing letters again. Can you hear us? Nothing. What about Otto? Let's check his last message. Well, if we eliminate the gap, it reads, powerful force sending message. The blackouts. That's it. Some kind of powerful force is trying to reach us. Chris, do you think it could be Dunedin? <laughs> He'd never ask for our help. Come with speed. Your help we need. Sounds like a poem. Poem. Rhyme. That's it. Dr. Couplet. She always speaks in rhyme. Who's Dr. Couplet? She's from Trialveron, and she helped us rescue Chris from the planet of Maze. Let's activate the transport and go. Wait a minute. How do we know it's not a trap? A trap? Yes, if we activate the transporter, Dunedin could get back to Earth. But the message is in rhyme. It must be from Dr. Couplet. Come on, Lynn. Anyone can send a message in rhyme. It's a perfect trap. Suppose it's not. Suppose Dr. Couplet really needs our help. Suppose Dunedin... Hey, calm down, will you? Well, what are we going to do? Okay. If we go to Trialfra, we could find your friend. And maybe help Otto and Theta. But what about Dunedin? If we were careful. Theta, Theta, can you hear us? Theta, if you can hear us, try changing circuits. Maybe some of her circuits are still active.
Okay, is a game played with a ball and a mallet? for you when you least expect it. Until then, know that I am watching and waiting. That is my message. <laughs> <laughs> It's a trap, and we let Deneen return to Earth. You'll know what he'll do, Lynn. We can't let that happen. We just can't. Don't worry, Otto. We'll think of something. <laughs> His uncle built that transporter way back when he thought Dunedin was a friend. Will it take us to Trialdron? When it's working. Mm. Do you think Trialdron's really going to explode? Dr. Couplet wouldn't lie, but I don't understand how she thinks we can help. There, it's ready. If we turn it on, it'll be activated. Let's go. Hold on, I don't know about this. The moment it's connected, Deneen could transport back to Earth. I've got it. The transporter only works one way at a time. So we'll activate it, transport two trialron, but leave one person behind to turn it off immediately. Yeah, then there's no way Deneen could get down here. Lynn, you're a genius. <laughs> That's the type of clever plan Otto would have suggested. Hear that, Otto? Alex is saying nice things about you. It's okay, Otto. We'll find a way to help you. Somehow. All right. Who wants to go? Mm -hmm. 